1027-1035, W-I-C-Y with Feel Good Tunes of the 80s and more. John Kazar is with you now and joining us is Todd Whitman, Dr. Todd Whitman with Alice Hyde Medical Center. And you were with us uh, last week, Todd, and we kind of uh, opened up discussions on, on how, at least locally, we're dealing with this uh, COVID-19. Exactly. Well, thanks for having me today. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, well, first off, you know, we're going to talk about ways, I guess, mentally that we can kind of, you know, get, you know, in grips with, with what's happening. Because right now, I guess it, we're ramping up a little bit. We're hearing about cases on the rise. Um, but th- let's not let that scare us, right? I think even though we have to make changes to our lifestyle, I think we could try to stay balanced uh, up top there. And I don't know if you have other ways that you want to uh, expand on that. No, I think uh, you hit it right on the head. We've got to somehow learn to live within this new normal uh, and really focusing on things that we may have lost track of in the last couple of weeks to a month, like eating well, uh, making sure that we're taking a break, you know, mindfulness mindfulness techniques, yoga, whatever uh, your method of uh, achieving that is. Uh, I think we all need to stop and remember to do that. I think we're very much caught up in the news and fear and isolation, and uh, we want to make sure and step back and really take care of ourselves, particularly our healthcare workers. Uh, Citizens Advocates have uh, created a 24 hour hotline for uh, all healthcare workers uh, where they can call in and receive free counseling uh, to try and help deal with the stress associated with this outbreak. So there's lots of availability for help out there. Uh, I would encourage. Uh, any healthcare workers, if you have concerns or uh, need somebody to talk to, uh, reach out to us at the hospital. And we can provide the information for that number. Sure. And I just wanted to say, uh, you know, the yoga and med- the whole meditation thing might be a lot for some people. Um, but to find a way to kind of just uh, get that mind at ease, I think I think exercise, even for minutes a day, can get you there for right. sure. Exactly. It, it does to me. You know, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Exactly. Uh, while you have to go for a walk alone, going for a walk. You know, whatever works for an individual, uh, it's it's time to rethink about the fact that this is going to be a bit of a long haul, and we don't want to just you know, bury our heads and wait till it's over. We got to take care of ourselves in the meantime. Yeah, real quick before we jump into a couple of other topics, uh, you know, it seems like people are just waiting for this to end. Well, how about you just pretend this is going to be here forever? No, sir, <laughs> I don't want to scare people. <laughs> but no, but like pretend it's going to be here forever, and then you go about your lifestyle that way, and suddenly it will be over at some point. It wasn't as bad as you sitting there just waiting for it. You know what I mean, though, at least, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I do know what you mean. I think, you know, we have so many avenues to stay connected that we didn't have, uh, you know, a decade or two ago. I think the Internet's a great way to stay in touch with people. We have, uh, you know, everybody's got their cell phone in their hand and texting. There's lots of great ways to stay connected. But uh, thinking about reducing screen time to some extent and doing things that are good for ourselves um, are also important during this time. Let's talk about search planning and why it matters for people. So uh, the the governor of New York has reached out to all hospitals uh, in the state to try and come up with what we're called what he calls a surge plan, uh, and that is a way to increase capacity to provide care uh, both to our communities and and perhaps uh, to some people outside of our communities if we get to that point. So at Alice Hyde Medical Center, we've increased our inpatient capacity from around 25 beds uh, up to 42 beds for now. We also have plans to get all the way to 114 beds uh, if things get to a point uh, where that's necessary. We all certainly hope that's not the case, uh, but we've taken every precaution to make sure that we can get people taken care of as well as possible during these times. I've seen some some national headlines about makeshift hospitals and football stadiums and all sorts of stuff going on right now because of, you know, expanded capacity. And, uh, you know, locally... We're holding up, right? We could say that. We are. We are certainly holding up. I, uh, you know, Somebody emailed me yesterday and told me how proud they were of our little community hospital for all the steps that we've taken. Uh, There's a person who's worked here for 25 years, and it, it really made me stop and think for a minute that we're doing a great job. And I think around the state, people are taking all the steps that they need to to get people taken care of. Uh, and I think we're out in front of it and ready to take this when it comes. Yep. Dr. Todd Whitman joining us from the Alice Hyde Medical Center. And one last topic here, Todd, we're going to talk about a, a newspaper article that I'm sure some people around here have been talking about. Do you want to get in on that real quick? Sure. Um, you know, I don't have a lot to say about it. Uh, the Today in the local paper, it was the uh, front page news that some providers in our community uh, shared concerns with government officials uh, regarding the readiness of the prison system to care for the inmates 
uh, in the event that there's outbreaks in the prison. And as you can imagine, lots of people in close contact, lots of concerns that, you know, infection rates in the prisons might be a lot higher than in the community. And uh, I think the provider's main message uh, to the government officials that they sent the letter to was, you know, that we really want to make sure everybody's prepared. I do want to be clear that that letter was not from the UVM Health Network. It was not from Alice Hyde Medical Center, uh, but we certainly support our providers and physicians uh, in their uh, desire to have their message heard and to advocate for their patients. All right. Well, clarification uh, officially sent out. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Todd. All right. All right. Thank yep. you so much for your time today. No problem. We will probably be probably be talking again soon here as we talked about, you know, the potential lengthiness of this whole situation. But, you know, conversations like the ones we have with you allow us to kind of live our life in, in a more closer to normal way possible. So we appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks so much. All right, Todd. Take care. Have a good one. It's 1027-1035-WICY inside the community with those at the Alice Hyde Medical Center.